I won't speak for long, so, um, but I will hopefully give you a few uh, nuggets to take away. Um, it's, it's great to be here at the UN Foundation, um, which was established uh, due to a gift by Ted Turner. And in writing my book, Philanthropic Capitalism, I had one of my funniest uh, answers I ever got to a question that I've asked as a journalist. I was sat there with Ted Turner, who is an eccentric fellow, I have to say. Um, and I said to him, well, you gave a billion dollars to the UN. Do you think it made much of a difference? And he just stared at me, and he stared at me, and he stared at me for about what seemed like half an hour, but it was probably at least a minute. And then he said, do you know, if you wore a hairpiece, you'd look 10 years younger. <laughs> Which was great advice, but I didn't take, it up, I didn't take him up on it. And he eventually answered the question and said he'd like to think it made a difference. And I think uh, since that point, actually, the UN Foundation has started to make more and more of a difference in the world. And so it's great uh, to see it behind uh, the Giving Tuesday movement as a, a real uh, source of strength. Now, Ted Turner, I think, I think it's believed he, he, he decided to give a billion dollars because he was in... Um, in the car to give a speech at the UN with a PR man who I'm assured wasn't Aaron, um, who said, well, you'll need to say at least a billion if you want to get it in the front page of the New York Times. And uh, so he said, okay, a billion it is. And that's how the, the story began. And I think what's so striking about Giving Tuesday is, is that it's, it's the opposite, in a way, of that uh, high net worth front page story type of philanthropy. It's a real bottom up um, democratic human story about something that matters to each one of us very, very uh, much from the heart. Um, and I remember the first time I heard Henry talk about the idea, um, which was Hen Henry and I at one point were working with another friend called Femi Oke to, to launch a podcast that really should have become a huge hit, but for some reason uh, the, the NPR didn't really get it. But it was uh, it's called Chatter from America, and it was Henry and me and Femi talking about how we saw America as, uh, as, as visiting Brits. And we were talking about Thanksgiving and just how great a holiday Thanksgiving is, and we wish we had it in Britain, but then how weird it was that it was followed by these two days of officially sanctioned shopping. Um, and, and Henry sort of said, yeah, you know, we should have, it's the start of the giving season, why don't we have, why don't they have uh, after Black Friday and Cyber Monday, why don't they have Giving Tuesday? And of course I, I laughed and scoffed, uh, what an absurd idea. And Henry just went away and started talking to people about it. And it became very clear very quickly that this was an idea that really just touched people um, in, in their hearts, that they, did, they felt this was a great idea and actually it was so obvious that it had to happen. And I think, um, you know, I think some great movements come because there are great leaders and great uh, strategists and all this, but, and, I, and I think Henry has done a remarkable job in his, in his role as a leader, but I think that this is an idea that really just has incredible momentum because it is what needs to be done. Um, it's an idea that goes to the heart of our, uh, you know, where, where, hum I, I, where I actually believe humanity is headed, because I think, you know, we, we, it's been talked about earlier, you know, we have even got now very clear neuroscience evidence that giving makes you feel happier as a person and makes you, gives you, is a more, way, is a, is a more fulfilling way to live. And I think we've spent, as, as a human race, probably 200 years indulging in, uh, you know, commercial uh, alternatives to, to actually doing what deep down makes us really tick as human beings. And I think we're gradually starting to rediscover that. Henry and I first collaborated when he had me interview uh, Bill Clinton on stage about his approach to philanthropy. And uh, the last thing Henry said before he put me up on stage was, just don't mention Monica Lewinsky. And so, of course, as an interviewer, you're sitting up on stage and all you can think about is Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> there came this point where, where Clinton was saying, someone, one of the questions from the audience came in and 
So, you know, why, what, what, what's been the most surprising thing to you about your experience of being a philanthropist? And he said, what amazes me is how happy it has made me. And so I couldn't resist it. And I managed to say, well, you know, the neuroscience evidence says you, know, you can have as, it makes you as happy uh, as having sex. And, uh, and I thought, oh, no, <laughs> am I going to say, <laughs> is the word gonna, are the words going to slip out? Unfortunately, he just said, yeah, but I haven't been having much of that lately. So uh, I rely on giving that <laughs> to get that dopamine fixed. But I think we just have to take seriously um, the fact that actually, you know, this movement has, um, has human biology on its side, that actually we should take seriously the neuroscience, that we should take seriously... The fact that if you give people a chance to give and to celebrate that giving, they will feel happier. And I find that the one thing that all these philanthrop mega philanthropists that I talk to have in common is they, they will say, Bill Gates will say, I have never been so happy as when I've been doing this work. And so let us, I mean, I think one encouragement to take is that we are, we are the dopamine merchants here in this movement. We, are, we, are, we do hold the, opportunity, the, the key of being able to encourage people to do things that will make them happy. And that's a very powerful force to have on, on your side. The second you know, is what I call the, um, the power of... Uh, and one, well, one of the themes of social media is that, the, that, that really has turned on its head traditional um, religious attitudes in particular towards giving. I mean, it used to be that giving was something that you did best when you did it secretly because it was somehow seen as sort of celebrating yourself in a very vain and uh, self-righteous way to talk about your giving. But I think one of the, the great things that's happening at the moment is that we're moving into a phase where actually sharing what you're passionate about is something that other people appreciate and are also um, inspired by rather than offended by, as long as you do it in the right way, obviously. But again, we have that force on our side, this sense that passion is infectious. So you have the fact that Philanthropy fundamentally makes you feel happy, that passion is infectious. And then I think the third thing that's really going on at the moment is that we are um, discovering new ways of, of, of getting things done that are all around um, what I call the power of the posse. Um, that essentially, it's a bit like, I always use the metaphor of the, the Western where somebody is attacking the town or the dam's about to burst and flooding everyone, and the, and the sheriff will say, right, who's available? Let's ride out together and get this job done, and then we can get back uh, to life as normal. And I think the, these sort of posses or coalitions of the positive, as someone else described them to me, are the way that we're going to get problems solved in the future. And Giving Tuesday is very much uh, in that spirit. It's, it's groups of people who don't, you know, I think it's crazy. You look at the charitable sector, the social sector in the past, and there used to be a very little collaboration and partnering. And I think, again, Giving Tuesday seems to have tapped into this desire that people have, quite naturally, to partner with each other and collaborate around solving problems. I actually looked into the history of the term posse, and it goes back to feudal Europe, um, where um, it was very much about how you would, uh, you, you would um, have the the local feudal lord would appoint a sheriff and he would form a posse. And I, I discovered in talking uh, to a historian about this that there was actually another thing going on, another legal term that applied to, to in fact, the most urgent and dire challenges that faced the town um, when even a posse wouldn't be sufficient on its own to solve the problem. And that is called the hue and cry. And that would be where the sheriff would not only just appoint a select band of people to ride out together, but would, in fact, enlist the entire town as deputies and set up a hue and cry so that everyone would be looking for the, the lost child or the, or, or the crook or whatever it would be. And I think um, Giving Tuesday, you know, you are the posse, you are the, you're the representatives of some of the, the big organisations that can organise others, but I think what we're trying to do here is set up a hue and cry around a whole series of uh, different issues that we're all trying to solve and it's a recognition that actually these big problems really only get solved when everyone's on board. And I think this is a very, very exciting moment. I think that we, we, in the first two years of Giving Tuesday, you know, we barely started what is going to become um, a tremendously 
uh, impactful uh, posse, hue and cry, that will um, tap into those deep feelings that, that passion is infectious and giving makes you happier, to really, I think, has the potential. My dream is that we actually will start to see um, problems getting solved that haven't been solved for, for decades, but also that we will see um, more and more people who are skeptical about giving start to discover giving and to, to actually become uh, more involved. And this will grow exponentially, and we will actually see a higher percentage of GDP in America going towards giving, but also we will see other countries where there are much lower rates of giving also start to discover how great it can be to be a giver and, um, and to take it up. And so I just really wanted to, to give you that sense of, of encouragement because I think, um, you, you know, I think there's the, the major, there are some really profound forces in favor of, of what's going on here um, that are going to help uh, the, the great talents that you have as social media experts, um, you know, people who can organize off, offline things as well as online things, uh, people who can measure things properly and tell authentic stories, because I think this is going to be a movement that is just grounded in where humanity is going next. And so what a great moment in, in, in history, you know, we could all be part of at the moment. And uh, I just want to thank you for coming today. Thank you for all that you have done as the kind of early founding heroes of this movement uh, to actually uh, get it up and running and, and here and I really want to sort of wish everyone a fantastic Giving Tuesday 2014 where we will make Giving Tuesday 2013 seem like just a small beginning to something that's a great deal more um, world changing. So thank you very much.